What time is it? Hi everybody, I'm Christian, this is Laziest Academy and we are working on this amazing shmup that I just played and I'm having fun with it. It is it is, it is not the best shmup in the world, but it is the best shmup in the world for me right now. I'm having fun. Um, right, on the last episode, the last episode was the boss episode, but if you ever played shmups, you know there is the boss and there is the true last boss, right? A TLB. So, uh, this episode is the true last boss of this um, of this little tutorial. So we're gonna do some wrap up stuff. We're gonna deal a little bit with uh, with the high score stuff. Um, I have a list of things that I noticed during uh, playtesting. We're gonna tweak the difficulty a little bit, and then I'm gonna introduce you to the final boss of the tutorial of the biggest and most difficult challenge. And there is gonna be a surprise from me at the end. So let's um, go, let's start talking about the things that I noticed while playing. So I was having fun playing the game. It is a very enjoyable, something I noticed and that's always a good sign is that even if I don't have to play it, I find myself just like going for another run. I just play through the entire game. I've beaten the game and I'm just going like, eh, let's do it again. That was fun, you know? And that's always good. That means like the activity of playing is actually enjoyable and you're not necessarily playing to, you know, unlock something or do something like this. You're not playing for the external reward. The activity itself is rewarding and fun and that's good. Nevertheless, there are some little details that I want to fix. Um, I have a little, there's a quite, actually quite a list here. So let's just start going. Uh, by the way, yeah, so to do is um, the boss is finished. So it's really just scoring nicer screens. And again, I have a bunch of stuff here. Um, right, so let us um, let me go to something that is uh, that's quite interesting. It's actually a bit of a learning thing. Um, so the share bomb function takes the um, uh, argument share, but the thing is share is also um, a global variable. So actually, this entire function will just work without the argument. It, it's just the same. You don't have to supply the argument share because share is already available to the function in form of a just a variable, a global variable available to all function. This is generally two differences between there's local variables, which are these little helper variables that evaporate as soon you know the function is over or even this loop is over, and the global variables are available to all of the functions at any given time. And as you can see, you quite often can get rid of arguments sometimes and just like use global variables and global variables generally in programming are uh, frowned upon. It's not, it's not classy. And in, t um, in case of Lua, it's they can slow down things if you have too many of them, but it's not something that we have to be concerned right now. Yeah, just something to watch out for. Good. So uh, also then now that we have this, um, let's look for the instances where we call this. And yeah, so here we actually don't have to supply share as an argument uh, to, the, to the share bomb function. Uh, another little detail I wanted to maybe add, something that I th thought would be nice um, uh, is when we are, let me go to the draw function. And let us, this is like a little detail, but when we say, uh, when we're saying here wave of, you know, which wave this is, it would be nice if we could say like how many waves are left. So like off and then uh, last wave. Um, so if we run this now, you can see wave one of nine. And that I think it gives people an idea that this is building up towards something because if there's just like another wave, another wave, people might think, oh, is this like procedural generated? Will it just go on forever? And if somebody dies in wave number eight and they have no idea, you know, how many waves there are, they might just quit the game. But if they know that this was, you know, the, 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 the second to last wave, they would be like, oh man, I'm going to go for it again. I'm pretty sure I can do it again, you know? Um, and in fact, we can do something like if wave equals last wave, then else. Um, so if this is the last wave, we're going to actually print, you know, last wave or final, final wave. So the wave before the boss is going to be, you know, special. I think this is, um, this is a nice little addition that, the, you know, it's not a big deal and it, it helps a lot, I think, in the experience. It improves the experience a lot. 
Now, I've written down something here, and so I, what I noticed playing is, and I also I've sent the game to other people. I also had like my previous prototype that was very similar to this, um, and I, I I sent it to also to some people to get some sort of feedback, like if it's uh, if it plays nicely. Uh, something I noticed that especially if people are um, not doing so well at the game, maybe they're beginners or they kind of like not really experienced with shmups, um, they will never use the cherry bombs. <laughs> It's difficult to make people use the cherry bombs. I don't use the cherry bombs actually too often. I have to like reinforce myself to use the cherry bombs because as soon as you lose even a single heart, you go like, oh, I gotta get that heart back, right? Um, so if, whenever there's a possibility to, like there's not much we can do about it. Um, maybe that's that's fine to keep it like this. But uh, if there's an opportunity for us to make the cherry bombs better, I'm gonna take them. Uh, and another and very simple way of doing this is to make the cherry bomb bullets uh, to make those actually destroy enemy bullets. Uh, that's that's a bit of a that's a bit of a, t a twist, but um, but I think it's nice because it really clears uh, you know the bullets off the screen and then gives you some breathing room and makes the cherry bomb more powerful. Um, so let us go to the update function uh, where we collide enemies with bullets. I'm gonna copy this entire thing. Don't worry, it won't be as big. And then I'm gonna do something like um, collision e bulls uh, with bullets. Now we have to be really careful here because there's a lot of e bullets, uh, the enemy bullets, and a lot of um, uh, player bullets, and that creates a lot of collision detections. And this can easily escalate and slow the entire game down. But as long as these these are just you know. Um, the cherry bomb bullets, we will be fine. So we don't want to do the collision detec detection always, just with the bullets that are um, the uh, the cherry bomb bullets. And so I want to actually start the loop with the enemy bullet uh, with the player bullets, and then the second loop is going to be the uh, e bull, uh, my e bull, and e bulls, right? Something like this. Um, and we're gonna check, we're gonna do the loop through the enemy bullets only if the bullet that we're looking at is actually uh, a cherry bomb bullet. So we're gonna go if my bull dot, um, there is no property cherry bomb bullet or not, we're just gonna use the sprite. It's, we're gonna be, you're gonna check cheap out. And if you're animating the, um, the cherry bomb bullets and if the sprites of the enemy uh, cherry bomb bullets are changing, then you have to figure out um, how to add a property that you know, specifies that this is a cherry bomb bullet. You could also maybe go with a damage because the cherry bomb bullets do more damage. Uh, so yeah, this is sprite 17. So uh, if my bull sprite seven equals sprite 17, then, and in this case, we want to do collision detection between, we don't need all this, all this crap. Um, yeah, we're gonna do a collision between my e bull and my bull. Uh, and if there is a collision, we're going to delete um, uh, ebulls, my ebull. And we're also going to do a little, maybe a little shwave. Uh, how does that look like? Small shwave, there we go. I mean, this is like really nice details for something that probably nobody will notice, but uh, whatever. Uh, it's going to be nice and red. Oh, also, it should maybe shouldn't be at uh, located at ebull uh, at my bull, but at ebull it should actually be look like as, as if the enemy bullet has evaporated basically. And then plus four is also wrong. We want to put it at just like where it was, like this, like this. I think this will look good. Uh, let's us give us some cherry bombs and test it out. Where is it? Where is it? Give it to me. Share, there we go. Give me, give me, give me eight. Uh, there is a problem in an update game function. We didn't close something, that's okay. That happens a lot. I can already tell, yeah. I can see with indentation that there is, uh, we didn't close the if statement. All oh, right, so again, to reiterate, we're looping through all of our the player bullets. Uh, for every player bullet, we're checking if this is a cherry bomb bullet and for all of the bullets that are cherry bomb bullets, we're going to loop through all of the enemy bullets and see if there is a collision there, okay? So I'm going to see if I can... Oh, that wasn't good.
See, we could wipe away the, the enemy bullet and uh, it doesn't even destroy the uh, player bullet, so that feels even more powerful. My list is a bit all over the place, so now we're gonna jump to the final boss. And something I noticed is that explosion at the end. It's not long enough, I feel. It's, I think it, it's nicer if it's, if it's just a little bit longer. So give us more two more seconds of this majestic explosion. So setting this to six instead of four. And then um, I, it's good to have like this more intense explosion phase uh, to make that begin at the middle at the middle of that entire span. So we're gonna set it from two to three. So it begins after three seconds. Um, also, I think uh, uh, it should be even more frequent. So T modulo four instead of five. And in order for the explosion not to sync up with the uh, modulo eight uh, explosions, you can do something like um, if um, T modulo four equals two which means they're not going to be happening at the same time as the T modulo 8 equals 0, I think, most of the time. You guys let me know if that's, that's the case. Yeah, let's, let's, see how, let's see how that looks like. Setting the wave to 8, saving, run, final wave. Yeah, it says, that's good. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> cherry bomb kill. Oh, right. Something I noticed. We should stop the music. Oh, that we haven't done that. Uh, we should stop the music when um, when, they, when the enemy gets killed. So let's go to behavior. Let's go to the kill function. And let's go music minus one. So just cut out the music. That's good. All right. Yeah, no, that, that, that long explosion, I think, made a difference. A uh, little detail in the update function uh, when a uh, level is finished and we are going to wave text. Let's find this. Ah, okay, here. So uh, here is where we are just basically um, checking if a wave is over. And when a wave is over, something I want to do is I want to set e -bulls. Um I want to empty an array of e uh, because I want to avoid the situation where um, a player, there's a stray bullet maybe on the screen, but a player kills the last enemy and then while the wave is over and we're celebrating moving on to the next wave, we get hit by a bullet. That's not good. That doesn't feel good. That's why we are clearing the, the bullets off the screen at this point. Uh, I think that's just like a little detail that uh, adds a bit of polish. Finally, a little detail here is I, I feel like the, the laser sound can go a little bit slower, uh, softer. I think it's fine to be like this. I th I don't know. It's it's it just makes the other sound effect be more more prominent, and I think that's good in general. I think it's fine. Now uh, tweaking a little bit the difficulty curve. Generally, I think the levels are okay. I don't feel uh, uh, you know a pressing need to redesign the levels. There is just one level, with the exception of one level, that I wanted to tweak something, and that is the. Oh man, I always don't know where I'm going. Uh, the yellow tutorial level, there we go. And that's the wave number six. Uh, that's the level that f for the first time shows the yellow guys and the yellow guy is flanked all by green enemies. And at this point, you know, we had some difficult enemies layouts already. So at this point, just having, you know, it, this is just not a very difficult level. It, you know, the, yeah, sure, the yellow guy is there, but once you shoot the yellow guy down, it's just all green enemies. So that's not a big challenge. So something I want to do here is I want to actually add a red enemies in the back. Um, so there's a potential that, you know, uh, clearing, uh, cleaning up the screen after the yellow uh, enemy was shut down is a bit more, um, you know, more involved, a little bit more involved. Okay, and now let's uh, talk a little bit about balancing. So um, I thought the f later levels are not, not, are not the, the difficulty to curve doesn't really, is, is a bit too shallow, I feel. I mean, it's generally not a very difficult game, but I feel like, I mean, it makes sense because we're actually not changing the attack frequency or anything. But before we change the difficulty curve, I also wanted to add another dial with which we can actually tweak the difficulty, okay? So let us go to the um, behavior, I think. Uh, and let us go to 
uh, yeah, here, pick timer, right? Um, so this is where we are picking the next fire. I would like to use a variable here to pick uh, how frequent the enemies are firing down. We're going to call this fire freak, or fire freck, <laughs> fire frequency. Uh, and we're going to use it as a gr base value, but we're also going to paste it here in the R&D function. Um, I, you, we could make this two separate variables, but I like if there's too many variables that you have to fumble around with to tweak the difficulty, I feel like I, I'd rather not do it because it's just too much work. Um, so I want to keep the number of variables that I'm tweaking uh, you know, to a minimum. If I just want to make the enemies shoot more frequently, I should have to just tweak one variable. I shouldn't be have to like also manipulate the spread. You know, It's just something for me. If you want the additional um, uh, control, then you can turn this into two variables, but I'm just going to keep it at one. Um, uh, so let let us actually turn it into something that is actually defined at the beginning in the start game, just uh, so we have something in that variable in case something goes wrong. So there's a fire frequency. This variable exists. It's no longer nil. And then we're going to go to the uh, levels. And then at the beginning of each level, we're going to define the attack frequency and the fire frequency. And so the default that we had was 20. So that's the thing that we're going to start with. That's actually not... Not a slouchy attack thing, but also I think um, starting the first level as uh, if the first level is too easy, um, then once you crank up the difficulty later on, uh, people will feel like suddenly they were like, "Ooh, this is a very different game than the one that I started out with." So maybe it's good to uh, you know set the adrenaline level already pretty high going in when it comes to the attacks. Okay, so let us uh, think about the, um, the different values. So what I thought, you know, attack frequency 60, we're going to keep this at 60. Uh, here, uh, wait, wait, 3, we're going to lower this down to 50. Uh, then 50, uh, I have a list here, and 50. And then uh, wave 6, the yellow tutorial, <laughs> it's very late tutorial. We're going to set that, that, that down to 40, 40. And then the you know the second to last wave, so the wave before the boss, uh, we're gonna set the attack frequency down to thirty, so even more down. Uh, so it is especially now it's it, this level we call it hell. It's fine if things are crazy there, and also this level is actually not like it doesn't have any yellow guys, right? So it's just a bit more basic guys. So I think it's okay to crank up the difficulty there in other ways. Uh, as for fire frequency, again, we kind of start pretty low, so I, I don't want to go low even lower that early. So let's keep it at 20, 20, 20. And then maybe here at wave 4, we're going to go down to 15, 15. And then uh, yellow tutorial 10, 10, 10. Okay. Uh, the, with the boss, it's, I mean, you could put some values in here, but actually it doesn't really matter because the do boss is not controlled by those two values. So these are the values that I thought felt okay. Um, but also you have to also consider like the, like, I don't think the differences are that severe. Like here between wave two and three, go attacking, going from attacking every two seconds with, uh, to attacking every two seconds and 20 frames. That's not a big jump. So I don't know if, if you even like really feel the difference there. Uh, I feel with the fire frequency, you definitely feel the difference if their you know, enemies are starting to spam you, uh, especially once the yellow guys come in, because those attacks really, really are vicious. And that is the things that I wrote down. Now, you guys maybe have your own notes, and that's fine. I sadly, I'm pre-recording all those episodes, so I cannot like collect all of the feedback from all of the people out there. When I release the video, I will definitely hang out in the comment section. And I will be eager to find out what, you, what, 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 what kind of things you found out. And if there's uh, any burning issues, you feel free to you know, pursue your own fixes and tweaks to uh, address them. But for now, let us move on to the scoring. Um, right, so let us get into the scoring. Um, let us make sure that just the scoring looks nice uh, first. Um, uh, we had that problem that 32,000 something something is the biggest number that Pico 8 can draw, and that's not cool. Uh, usually in shmups or in arcade games, you have cooler numbers. <laughs> Um, cooler meaning with more zeros. Uh, so the solution there is just to draw more zeros. <laughs> it's gonna be the stupidest way to fix this problem. We're just gonna draw more zeros. <laughs> We're drawing more zeros, guys. Um, uh, where is it? Where are my one? Oh yeah, this is here in, in the score uh, thing. I'm gonna actually create a special function for this. Function 
um, I'm gonna call this make score and it will return a, uh, it will receive a value and then it will return a value it will it will be if val equals zero then return zero else uh, rich uh, well actually uh, we don't need the else here we're just gonna uh, so if the value that we're receiving from make score is zero we're returning zero otherwise we're returning uh, val dot dot zero zero we had that early on you know dot dot is a way to combine strings so we're basically appending two zeros and returning the number that we received as a string the reason why i did this val equals zero thing i mean i just wrote the function previously and i just know that there's, there's a problem here that um uh, when uh, the score is zero uh, uh, if we didn't have this if the score was zero then uh, the score was read zero 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 and i just want the score to be zero if there is nothing in there and there are some dogs outside going to town you go to town dogs mm, all right so here when we're printing the score now i want to just print make score score and this should us get us more interesting score numbers. Uh, all right, let's let's just start at back at at where we should be. Let's return share to zero. That's very important. <laughs> and let's return wave to zero as well. Correct. So the scores is uh, looking better now. Okay, so another thing, as, so we kind of have to think about how we are going to do a scoring system. I'm not an expert, again, because I'm just usually play shmups for playing through it. I'm not really scoring that much, so I'm not really, I don't really have any special ideas on what to do here. Uh, I will definitely, um, something I've noticed is that it's, it's good to give players a higher score if the, the ship that they're shooting down is currently on a mission, on an attack mission. Uh, and I think that makes sense. So my thinking is that uh, we're gonna assign different scores to different ships because some ships should be more valuable. Shooting down a yellow guy should be more valuable than uh, you know shooting down I know a red guy or something, or a green guy. And um, but then if you shoot them down while they're on an attack run, then you get double the amount of points. Is what I'm thinking. Uh, so let us go to the spawn of the enemies. And let us just give our uh, few enemies just a whole bunch of different scores. Where is it? It's so funny, I'm just like blindly poking in the program and trying to find the... <laughs> ah, there we go, there we go. Okay, so the green alien, Mayan dot score. I'm gonna give it a one. Uh, and the red flame guy, that's gonna be twice as cool. That's gonna be a two if you can shoot the, down the red guys. And the spinning ship, that's gonna be a three if you can shoot them down. I'm not really that creative. And the yellow guy, uh, that's actually not gonna be a three. That's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be a, not gonna be a four. Let's give it a five. This is because this is a, this is a serious ship, right? This is a, this is a big boy. Uh, and then the boss is not gonna get any score because we're gonna do something else there. Um, now in the kill uh, function, uh, where we go? Kill and there we go. Okay, so here's where we're getting the score. Uh, but maybe I don't want to get it right now. Uh, let us do um, let us do a local score mult. That's a score multiplier. We're gonna set it to zero. Mm, and if uh, the mission is an attack then score mult is going to be two. Let's put it together with share, share chance here. Okay, uh, score mult is going to be one, not zero, because then we wouldn't get any scores. So the skull power is going to be one, multiplicator is going to be one, but if it's going to be two if there's an attack. And then after, we're going to say if, um, no, no, we're just going to go our, uh, score plus equals um, my n, dot score multiplied by score malt. So now we're getting, gonna get twice the score when we shoot down an enemy during an attack run. And then also, 
something I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a um yeah if uh core mult is not equal one then that's a bit extra if statement but whatever again it's not has to, it doesn't have to be efficient so if score mult is not one we're gonna actually pop the float so we're not gonna actually show any score values when we shoot down normal enemies. We're also gonna we're only gonna show them if we shoot down enemies that are you know on an attack run. And now I actually want to you know want to uh, show how much score we're getting. So let's get uh, this in here, and we're gonna use this function that we just had. What's this function? Make score, right? Um, yeah. So pop float make score my n score multiplied by score mult and that will be in the float like this let's try this out all right so it's 200 that's good 200 for shooting the um regular guys during an attack round so I'm hoping to see the uh, red guys here. Yep, we're getting 400 uh, for shooting them down during an uh, attack run. Twice as much. Okay, and then the spinny guys give you 600 because they cost. Uh, they give you three points, but six points when you shoot them down during an attack. Okay, so far this is working. So um, there's two places where, or maybe three places where I want to add more score. So um, for example, when we kill the final boss. Uh, so let's let's go here where we, uh, the, the big, big explosion comes in. Uh, uh, so this is at the end where the boss dies. And at this point I want to, well, actually I also want to bring in the pop float. I also want to show a float of that. Uh, right. So we have to think about how much we're getting for the bad guy. Uh, we could just get 100. That seems okay. Uh, and the 100 here is, I mean, it's essentially so only, so the scores when you finish the entire game will get, uh, it will be higher on the high score list basically. It will be worth, worth more. It's diff more difficult to have a higher score if you haven't finished the game. But also just like to reward the player for like, yeah, you did it. 10,000 seems like a good number to reward the player. Um, yeah, so we're going to make the score uh, 10,000. So like it's 100, but, but you know, two zeros uh, behind it. Um, and then uh, the position is going to be uh, the same as here, 16, maybe a bit higher up. Uh, maybe not 12, but let's go six. Okay, this means that we actually have to play through the boss again. You know what, let's just give the boss uh, less health. I'm fine for, with that. I'm, I'm fine being like, cheap like this. Uh, I am just want to see the, the, the pop. Ah, that's good. That's good. That's very good. Um, yeah, so that's good. Um, so that's the first one. And now the second one is when uh, the cherry power ups. Um, there I also want to give some score. So if you collect nine cherries and you already have a life, then you should get some score for that. And they will reset. And it's like if you're not going for score, you don't care. But it might be a good strategy to just collect the cherries and never use them. I, we don't want to be it to be too good this strategy we want people to reward to work people using the cherries and i have an idea or how to do that um, but for now all right so here we go this is where we're getting life and this is where we're getting the points uh so 100 is how much a um 100 is how much a um a boss is Let's just give it 50 then, I guess. 
it's it's a lot right but it's not too much it's like shooting five yellow guys on the other hand there's no no five yellow guys in our game so i don't know let's just keep it at 50 it's fine hi everybody here's christian from the future with a short assist so um Christian from the past never realized that this line that we just pasted in that contains a bug, an error. And I'm gonna have you figure out at this point what the error is so we can pause the video now and you can try to figure out what uh, what bug is that we just created. All right, and this is now the resolution of what the bug is. So, um, yeah, we pasted just in this code, but we actually haven't adjusted it to the position that we're pasting it in. So this was a float that was about to pop over, pop up over an enemy that we defeated. But this time we're not defeating an enemy, we're picking up a pickup. So this my n doesn't exist. And therefore this will throw an error when, uh, when this happens. And <laughs> it's embarrassing that we haven't tested this. It just shows you that you should test those things, even if you think you're sure that the code will work. Anyway, the solution here is to just do, um, instead of the my n, do a my pick. And instead of plus 16, plus four, uh, my n, uh, my pick, plus four, basically the same thing as we have over here. Um, so yeah, that's it, moving on. Um, but also something I want to do <clears throat> is also when I shoot a cherry bomb, I also want to reward the little, uh, you know, hitting the uh, enemy bullets. And that's was the third thing I wanted to do. So um, here, when we, yeah, so here where we hitting the enemy bullets, I want to just give a little bit, a little bit of a reward for that. I don't know. Um, let's give them two. No, yeah, actually, let's give them five. I think that's that's okay. <laughs> There is probably going to be some broken way in which you can exploit this, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm not, not going to do a pop-up there. It's just you're just going to get it secretly. Or maybe you should get a pop-up there. Ah, nah, it's just like it just a lot of bullet bunch up. There's going to be a bunch of text. It's going to be it's going to be a nightmare. Okay, so we are now getting some score, right? And uh, something I want to now add is also the so-called high score. Um, so let's do a high score uh, in addition to the score. Um, so we're going to go high score uh, equals zero. And then something that we want to do is that at the end of the game, uh, no matter if you lose the game or if you win the game, I want the player to be like, ah, so if your score was higher than the high score, then the you get a new high score. Uh, so let's go there. Uh, actually, draw functions is something I want to do. So I want to actually first just put it on the text that, yeah, okay, you, you get a high score. Um, so here in game over, for example, we're gonna print something like if score is greater than high uh, score then. And then we're gonna print, well, actually we want to print our score for, for, for once. <laughs> we have, aren't even printing our score on the screen. Let's do that maybe. Uh, let's get this guy up or out. The, um, oh yeah, by the way, when we're printing the, high, the score at the top of the screen, let's print two pixels further down so it's aligned with the cherry counter. And now let's get this guy out and put it into the game over. I want to put it in here. Uh, um, we'll print it, print it in, in blue. That's fine. Is, is it fine? We're going to find out if, if it's fine. Uh, definitely lower than 64, so let's go, uh, no, lower than 40, between 40 and 80. Let's, let's put it at 60 and then 64, oops, 64, um, it's going to be C print, um, yeah, that's good. And then if the score is higher than high score, then we're going to print um, we're going to say new high score, exclamation point, and it's going to be six uh, pixels further down and it's not going to be blue this time anymore. Uh, we're going to put it, we're going to make it yellow, maybe 10. Uh, I just want to see how that looks like. Uh, oh no, I, I wrote out wave or it should be off. People were screaming at the screen. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I haven't even noticed. All right, so let's let's kill somebody. So now we already have a high score because the high score was zero. 
Right. I want it to be a bit f uh, further up. Mm -mm -mm. So maybe something like four. And this is 58. Yeah, maybe the entire press key to continue is, is further down. Let's just, just go, let's do something like this. So it's 90 and we're gonna make it 90 here as well in the uh, win screen. And again, this is UI work, as you can tell, this this takes time. Oh, I wanted to die. <laughs> you see, now I want to move everything further down. Oh, why is... oh gosh. A new high score uh, exclamation point and then additionally this high score. Uh, that's, not, that's bad. Okay, so now I want to move it down again. You know, just nudging things back and forth. Once you move one thing, you want to move the other thing. It's 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 the usual thing. Sixty-six. What? Oh, I didn't kill anybody. What? But something was also wrong. Oh man, it has to be sixty. See, that looks good. I would even maybe blink the uh, the text. So let's do that real quick. We're gonna go do local c equals seven. If um, t modulo four is smaller than two, then you know just like little, little in between blinking. You know, at the beginning where we created uh, like our own custom blinking function, and now we're just doing it here between the chairs, so to speak. Um, so yeah, I want to now plug the C. So little helper variable that's white by default, but then every two frames it will uh, switch. You know, it will alternate between two frames white and two frames yellow. <laughs> Yeah, it looks a bit more more lively, I think. Okay, so let us um, paste this stuff into the win as well. Uh, basically the same thing. I uh, want to make sure that the um, press any key to continue is at the same height. It is. So it should uh, look exactly the same. Now this is just drawing things to the screen, but I also want to actually save the new high score. That's important. Um, so let us... Uh, that's going to be update function. Uh, so I want to do something like... I mean, this is a bit... Uh, it's not ideal, but it's uh, it's fine. So when we press a button and we back to the start screen, before we do that, we're gonna say if score is greater than high score, then high score equals score. This high score variable is basically our high score, like our record. Um, there's not gonna be like a list of high scores where you can enter your initials. That's I did that in breakout tutorial. If you're interested, I'm gonna show a video here. Um, but uh, for this tutorial, we're just going to keep one number and that's going to be the high score and you're trying to push this number higher and higher. That's that's all we're going to do. Um, and also we're not going to type in initials because let's be honest, it's usually just one person playing. Um, and we're going to do the same thing in the update uh, game over function. Again, when the highest, when the score that you achieved is higher than the high score, or while you're returning to the to the main screen, then we're going to replace the high score with a new score. Um, now, something I also want to do, and you know, it's just one thing after another. I want to actually update the the. Uh, I want to draw the high score on a start screen. So I, I'm going to do it like a haphazard way because we want to make the high score, we want to wrap up the high score and then we're going to return to the start screen and make it all pretty. All right, so here where we are printing high score, I'm just going to take this all, uh, actually, no, no, no. I'm just going to print this part. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 this part. And we're going to, in a start function here, my awesome shmup, we're going to print the high score the same way. Um, High score. We're gonna write high score this time, and then high score. So you can see high score is zero. Uh, we can even we can let's make this two lines. It looks awkward if it's just like one line. 
because this might be a very long number. High score, uh, C print. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, and it this will be sixty four again. Oh God, and it should be haphazard, but then now I, look, I'm I'm doing layout again. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Um, yeah, something like this. Uh, let's see how that looks. So the high score is zero, and luck looks awkward. So what I want to do is I want to only show the high score if there is a high score. So if high high score is greater than zero, then. So you don't see the high score if there's no high score. So it's kind of like a feature that is kind of like unlocked if you if you do something. Okay, so I'm gonna well, I want to die with a with a small high score so we can see what what's up. All right, so this is a new high score. We're returning. Oh, there's a problem. High score is nil. It's not. Oh no! It's, do you see this? Do, it's one of those. It's it's for some reason it's zero or. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That's such a. Stupid bug! Oh, good thing that I'm prepared, and I, my my trained eyes have seen the the mistake, because I had those problems before. Just looking like, what's wrong here? And this like zero was uh, oh. Okay. Good. So this is works. Now um, I want to uh, discuss uh, saving the high score because right now it's like when you restart the game. You know, every time you restart the game, the high score is gone. So that that kind of like makes the high score kind of pointless, right? We want to be able to preserve the high score for future generations. So when you restart the game, you can can continue working on your high score and so forth. Pico Eight has an ability to save some uh, stuff to um, like a save state, basically. It kind of it's um, there is a function that allows us to save some data locally on the machine uh, and it really depends on you know where pico8 is running if it's on a web browser there's going to be some cookies i guess or some some kind of thing um that uh, pico8 uses then to store um save games save games uh on in some kind of browser data right and then when you uh, pull up that web, web page again uh you will have your save data still there when it's run as a desktop app like here it's actually saved as a file on um, in somewhere in the folder structure and you, you can actually look up the file and you can find it. Now, sadly, it's not just like a file that you can write in huge amounts of data. In fact, you can just save 64 numbers. That's all you get, 64 numbers. All right, so here's how this um, this works. So at the beginning, usually at the beginning, I don't know, I guess you could put it somewhere else, but I like to, I think it's a good idea to put it at the beginning. You have to initialize the entire thing. Uh, we have to do like a card data and in a, in, and then supply the card data with an ID. And that ID will identify your app as have, you know, being the name of the app. So it saves the data under a name that you can then re later recall, right? This should be something that is not overlapping with some other, um, cartridges that are out there so you should come up with your own id and put it in the card data for me i'm just going to do lazy devs shmup yeah let's just call it lazy dev shmups it could be anything it could be like it doesn't really matter um it's just a way for pk to identify the this card uh and you know associate the data with the card that is saved somewhere right um, so once this is initialized, uh, there is two functions that you need to know about, and that is going to be dset and dget. Uh, dget will get the data, would load the data in, and dset will write the data. And I'm going to show you how that works. So for the high score, we can do something like dget. We're going to get, uh, and again, 64 numbers. So we have to like specify in an uh, in the argument that uh, where which number we're loading of the 64 numbers that you can write to the disk right so uh let's just go with number zero it's it doesn't really matter that much so at the beginning of the of the program actually let's, let's do it right together so it's clear so at the beginning of the program we initialize uh, our save file under this name under lazydefs underscore shmup and then we are getting 
uh, uh, the first number uh, from that save file and putting it into the variable high score. So now the high score is loaded from the disk. And if this is the first time we're launching this game, it will be a zero. And now all that we need to do is here in the uh, update function, when we are writing the score, when the high score becomes a new score, that's where we also do a deset. Uh, this is a bit of a more complicated uh, function. So this takes two arguments. The first argument is going to be uh, the number that we're setting, that's zero. And the second argument is the actual value that we're writing into that number. And in this case, it's, it doesn't matter at this point, right? We're just going to write our score into the slot number zero in our save file. Um, and we have to do this uh, when we die as well. So now when we uh, uh, break the high score, uh, we and we return to, to the home screen, then that score gets saved. Uh, something I don't like is that it only happens when you actually return to the home screen. So if somebody like quits the app on the death screen, uh, that high score doesn't get saved. Mm. I don't like that, but I also am a bit, a bit too lazy to fix that right now. Lazy deaths, it's in the name. <laughs> Let's see if this works. So no high score. High score six, 600, there's new high score. Let's press the button, high score is 600, okay. Quitting the app, starting, high score still 600. Hey! <laughs> isn't programming sometimes magical? I don't know, it's, it's sometimes it feels like, like why? Why is, it so, why is it so awesome? Right, not that difficult, D set and D get. Uh, don't get your hopes up. It's the 64 numbers are quite limited, so you cannot save that much. Um, you you can save progress, uh, simple progress like which level somebody unlocked or something like this. Um, but if you know, if you think about some kind of RPG with multiple characters, or even like I like something a project I had in my mind is to create like like a little Stardew Valley, but it's just like saving the entire garden in 64 numbers would be. Oh man, it's um, uh, probably not, not really possible. But it's perfect for high score like this. And as you can see, it's quite easy to use. Now there's two more things that maybe I wanted to add. Uh, these are not necessarily things that I had in my playthrough, just things I, I wrote down that I think might be good. Um, well, actually one of them is actually feedback I received that I just wrote down on a different different place in my, in my to-do list. Um, so what I wanted to do is when we die, first of all, I want to spawn the ship at a different position at the beginning. It's, I think it's, it's not, it's a bit too high on the screen. Let's spawn it at like 80, uh, Y at 80. I feel that feels a bit better and also not at 64, but, um, at 60, so it's more centered. Nah, I think it's still a bit too high. Let's put it at 100. No, that's too far, too low. Let's put it 90. Yeah, maybe that's, that's good. Yeah, like once the enemies come in, that's, that seems like a good, good distance. Uh, but also, um, some people suggested that maybe if you die, you actually respawn at a certain point, not where you necessarily where you were. That makes it more feel more like, you know, this is a new life and, and not more like, you know, oh, I just lost a health, you know. Uh, I agree. Uh, also, it might um, lead to a situation where maybe, you know, if you're like caught up somewhere, uh, then you not necessarily get hit again by something, especially if there's multiple bullets approaching you, then you're resetting and being somewhere else on the screen might be a good, might be a good thing uh, to do. So let's go to the update function where we die. There's actually two places where we die. This is, this is, a, this is a bit bad. We maybe should put, uh, turn these into, uh, into a, a function, but okay. So when we die, we're going to reset the position, um, but we're actually going to put it at 100. I thought 100 was okay. And here as well. Let's just see how that looks. Yeah, okay, now I'm resetting. Yeah, no, I actually, that's, uh, nah, 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 actually, uh, I think if you respawn, you should respawn further down. So you're kind of further away from the enemies. Yeah, okay, that seems better. Okay, okay, so another thing that I wanted to maybe add, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I would love to flash the screen sometimes. Uh, so the way we shake the screen, um, I want to also have a flash, and that basically means, you know, flash the screen for X amount of seconds. Um, so let's just do that real quick. So flash uh, zero, and then it's, it's pretty easy effect, I think. 
and then you go in the uh, draw function when you draw the game you go uh, cls zero but uh, you're gonna go if flash is greater than zero then uh, then flash minus equal one else cls so you usually you clear the screen into black uh, but if the flash is being is greater than zero and is counting down and then you flash it in a different color and it's not gonna be like a white flash I think that's it's gonna be too extreme. We're just gonna flash in this red color uh, Right, and so now uh, what I want to do if when I trigger the bomb I want to flash it a little bit uh, It's update function <laughs> when we press the bomb. Oh, uh, yeah cherry bomb. Maybe you should just go to the cherry bomb function then uh, There we go. Uh, let's just it's a cherry bomb. Yeah, okay, let's go flash equals four, four frames. That seems good. Let's, let's see how that feels. We need to get a cherry. And maybe a bit too much. Let's go two frames. Oh, let's go three frames. I think two frames is going to be too soon. Give me a cherry. Yeah, that seems good. And that allows us, uh, if we also get hit by the enemy, that's also maybe something that you can do. You can flash the screen and you get hit as well. Uh, of course, we don't want to, you know, overdo it. But yeah, if you get hit, we're gonna also flash the screen uh, at both points when you get hit by bullets or enemies. And of course, of course, when the enemy is exp uh, the boss is exploding, we're also gonna flash the screen. <laughs> of course. And with that, there's just one thing left on our to-do list, and that is making nicer screens, nice a nicer start screen. Let's just do that real quick. We haven't touched this this ugly start screen for a long time now. I think it's it's time. Yeah, we just let's fix the background first. That's just so ugly. Let's just make we have such beautiful stars. Let's just you know let's just draw the stars. Let's just draw a beautiful star field. In the background it's just so easy we already have that function i don't know why we haven't done it before <laughs> it's a bit silly uh oh yeah so the problem is that the stars don't exist so something i actually wanted to do is um, the function where we create the stars these guys let's do, the, do, do this in a function make stars and then yeah the, the tools function function make stars so that will just basically redo the stars. And then we're gonna make stars at the very beginning of the game. Before we go, no, actually we're gonna make, what? we're gonna make stars in the start screen function. Here in the start screen function. Right, the stars are there, they're not animated obviously. So let us uh, do the star field function into the update of the um, start screen. Oh, it's not star field function. It's animate stars. I'm silly. Woo! <laughs> okay, that's an interesting start screen. Uh, we have to do it CLS zero. But no man, that was that that went not trippy. Uh -huh. What? Oh no! What? Oh, it's all wrong. Ah, oh, Jesus! I'm. It's late, guys. It's late. I'm sorry. I'm an old man. There we go, there we go. Okay, just switched update and, and draw. Okay, um, something I don't like now is that the stars are basically the same on the start screen than they are in the game. Uh, so I wanted to actually update animate stars. I want to do it for a while now. So let's do this, um, let's give this an, um, an argument. And we're gonna say like, if SPD equals nil, then spd equals one um, and this is just going to be a multiplier uh, for um so um, yeah so the idea is that we are we animate the stars we can supply it with an argument but we don't have to but if we supply it with an argument then the speed of the stars will get multiplied uh, with the number that we supplied 
Um, and yeah, again, if the argument is not supplied, then we're going to assume that the speed is 1, the multiplier is 1. Uh, but uh, here, we are just going to multiply the mystar SPD with the SPD that we received in the argument. And this allows us to control the speed of the stars. So now in the update start function, I can uh, make the stars go slower. And then, it, like then, it makes sense that uh, like, now you're kind of like f floating through space. We can make it even slower, uh, but now it gets like really like choppy a little bit. So let's maybe 0 0.4. Yeah, that seems more fluent. So now the stars are slowly scrolling by. Right, it's more uh, relaxing. And then when you press a button, it gets more lively. And now something you can also do, and that's something that I've seen a lot of people actually do in a in a Discord. So yeah, let's do that. That's I think that's worth it. When you in the update function, uh, when we're animating the stars here, we can do something like if um, mode equals wave text, uh, then else end. Um, so if uh, we are showing the wave text, then we can make the stars go faster. <laughs> So it looks like we're kind of like flying from one sector to another, you know what I mean? And you can push this effect pretty far, you can, you know, make the, the stars turn into a line so it looks like hyperspeed. We're not going to do that. It's just a little nice flourish that kind of like uh, makes more of a visual, like it creates more of an idea of space, that you're moving through space. Okay, so this uh, kind of like sorts out that um, problem. Something I like to do with every game is to actually have a version variable. And that just tells me kind of like which version this is. This is going to be version v1, and I just want to draw that version in the corner of the screen. Uh, in a, in Conspicuous manner, just like a no, just like a little printer Rooney a version one one uh, with this dark blue color. So it's over there in the corner. You know, most people won't notice, but uh, if there's any kind of bug, you can ask them. Oh, can you look in the corner? What version you're on? Right, like just so you know which version. If, if there's some kind of bug that you already fixed, but then people are reporting the bug, then you know if that bug still persists. You haven't actually fixed it, or if they're just using an old version. You just have to remember every time you release a new version to change this this variable. Okay, so now to make this screen more beautiful and not call it my awesome shmup anymore, uh, I actually just I thought about what kind of name to use and I created a little logo. So I'm gonna use that logo uh, now and and put it in and it's good. This is gonna be the name reveal, I guess, the name reveal of the shmup. Whoop, plop, cherry bomb. Yeah, I th I thought you know the cherry thing. It's the, the, the thing is like this is a weird shmup, right? This is a weird thing to to release because it's just like a, this weird combination. Like all of the characters that we have here, these are just like uh, came from the community. They are just from very different people without any kind of like cohesive story or anything. So it's kind of difficult to put a tag on this. And it's like ah, this is a shmup about mm, because it's not really about anything. It's just like this weird uh, weird uh, combination. Uh, but um, uh, so, but then I brought in some details like the chariot is kind of like this, this kind of like unique element, right? So I thought, and the ship is already red, um, so I thought Cherry Bomb would be maybe a good name for that. Um, also, I thought Cherry Bomb feels more playful and 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 kind of like you know more like a toy or something, and not really like a uh, like something that's serious, you know. Um, so I thought this would add a bit of a levity to this thing, so people don't take it seriously and and don't think about that this is supposed to be like the, this the super super serious kind of shmup. I think like managing expectations um, is quite often a very important aspect of of making video games, making sure that people are in the right mindset when they approach your game. I think they will enjoy it a lot more if they know kind of like who they are supposed to be and what this game is supposed to be from the get go. And I think little details like setting the name. Uh, uh, help a lot to kind of like establish vibes. Uh, and the, I didn't do a pixel art thing for this, but uh, I just like in Photoshop, I just like, you know, went through my collection of fonts. I created a font. Uh, I made sure that it's not anti-aliased uh, and created PNG of it. And you, I used the Pico 8 colors. So uh, 
So I had, had a good idea of how it will look when I import it into Pico 8. I did some tweaks here. You can sometimes see little, you know, little uh, pink pixels because I wanted to round out to some of the letters, especially the bees. Uh, you know, the, the bees look a bit weird uh, without it. All right, so that is the logo, and so our goal now is to draw the logo. And you know, you know, we don't know what it is. This is this is at this point this should be familiar ground. SBR uh, two hundred twelve. Uh, I am not sure what, what is the width of this thing. Uh, twelve in width and two in height. According to my calculations, I should print it sixteen pixels of the of the edge uh, and then um, uh, what position? I don't know, like 30, let's see how that works. Seems good, seems good. Maybe press any key to start a bit further down. Uh, maybe maybe 17 would, be, would work better. Oops. Yeah, I think that 70 would work better. Also, I maybe you can at this point write maybe a subline as well. So like a, a subtitle. People really like the the shwave word in, in the Discord, so I thought maybe a uh, short shwave shmup is maybe a fun subtitle to use here. Um, so let's go 17 again. Uh, 46. 6, something like this. Uh, okay, now we want to have it a bit higher and then a bit further to the side. Oh, actually we can do a C print here. Then we don't have to try to position center it perfectly. Ta-da! And then the press any key to start is I think a bit too high. So let's put it further down. Let's put it at 90. Uh, yeah, if you do that, then the high score maybe has to go also go down a little bit. So by two maybe. And again, this is, you know, UI stuff. It's like, you know, just making everything just align up just right, you know? Uh, maybe one pixel more. One pixel makes a big difference in here. Yeah, that seems good. That seems like a nice start screen. But it's not enough. One last thing. Okay, I, I just experimented with this. I thought it was cute. And so I have to do this. So we're gonna have a peaker X uh, and a peaker Y. Yeah, the peaker X is gonna be 64 at the beginning and peaker Y is gonna be, let's just set it to zero for now. Uh, I'm not sure if we even need a peaker Y. Uh, yeah, actually we don't need a peaker Y, you just need a peaker X. Um, and then, so the idea is that there's going to be a little enemy poking behind the, poking up behind the, um, the logo. I think it's, it's cute to, to bring in, because the, the green guys used, turned out to be like this, um, important enemy because they're the first enemy that you encounter, but also the last enemy that you encounter, the final boss. So I wanted to bring them a little bit, uh, in on the, on the start screen. So it's not just about the cherry bomb, but also about the little monster that you're shooting. Um, and, uh. Yeah, so I want to do. I want to draw this guy here. Uh, so I will draw it after the. We draw the. Let's draw it first, so we can see him. We can see him there. Um, SPR. We're not going to animate. We're just going to draw a sprite. Twenty-one. Uh, so it's going to be Peaker X, and then the Y is going to be um, just this. The position of the of the logo, mm, and that's going to be it for now. And yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, we don't see, oh yeah we don't see it because it's co then covered up by the logo but so we print after the logo so we can see this is this little guy and now the idea is that we want to animate this guy so actually yeah no we can just do it in the draw function right here so we're gonna go plus sign time right so we're gonna take time the time function that counts up the seconds we're gonna mash that uh, that function into the sign function um, so that it moves up and down. It moves up and down, but not strong enough. So we have to multiply it by, you know, some kind of value. Let's multiply it by six. Oops, uh, let's multiply it by four. Uh, but I deleted one parentheses. Mm. Mm, I did something wrong here. I have to multiply it behind the parentheses. Yeah, there we go. He's picking up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's do like 28. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, uh, let's go 29. I think this looks better. No, no, 28 I think is better. Okay, so, but now he's going too fast. So let's divide it by three, the time by three here. Maybe even four, let's try that. No, now, now he's looking too lazy. Let's go 3.5. Okay, and so now the only thing I want to do is if um, uh, if this if sign time if, if this function here this if this is um, smaller than. 0 0.5, uh, minus 0 0.5. And so if the sinus wave dips very, very low, so we were sure that the enemy is behind the the curtain, behind this, the uh, the logo, we're gonna randomize its position. We're gonna go R and D, uh, uh, picker X equals R and D. Let's go 128 for now. We're gonna fix this in a second. I just wanna see what happens. Okay, it's exactly the opposite of what we want for some reason. I'm not sure why. Okay, never mind. It's greater than 0 0.5. It's just like we're experimenting at this point. We didn't. I, yeah, yeah. See, now if it dips behind the, um, and yeah, it randomizes every frame, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be. You know, it doesn't have to randomize just once. It can keep randomizing. It's fine. Uh, just as I just want him to peek out on the different spots whenever he comes out. So it's kind of like this whack-a-mole kind of situation. Um. Yeah, that's good. Um, I just want to have to kind of like tweak the, the randomization here because it's not quite right. Um, so let's just go like um, 20 plus R&D 88. Uh, let's let's see what twenty will look like. What what happens if it comes up um, at twenty? Yeah, that's too. That's not far enough. It has to be thirty. Uh, twenty. Uh, let's go thirty, and then let's see what plus eighty eight would look like. Yeah, that's too much. Uh, let's bring it down. So again, we just like I'm just experimenting. I'm just don't, don't even know. I don't. I don't want to do math. I just want to want to see. So wait. So yeah, that seems good. So let's do let's do it like this. Maybe it won't be always centered, but whatever, whatever. I will get all this stuff. I will do print it on the screen before we print the logo. So then the logo will cover him up. And now he's always peeking out behind the logo. <laughs> oh, you, you never, no, don't even want to shoot him, right? He's so cute. <laughs> you know, this is kind of like the final mile. And at this point we can actually make a huge impact with little changes. Because again, this is the first impressions and there's just one chance to make it your first impression. I'm gonna do uh, one last playthrough. Oh, vital boss. official high score I guess that's the score to beat this was this tutorial guys and now as I promised there's gonna be a final final the true last boss and a surprise and the TLB the true last boss is 
The Doggy Zone. That's right. Yeah, what a surprise. The Doggy Zone is, is, the, is the true last boss because the Doggy Zone, I tell you, from now on, it's all Doggy Zone because it's the end of the line. The rails are off. The railroading has stopped. Now it's you're free to go. You can do whatever you want and you should. If you made it this far, congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations. Well, well, well done. And keep going. Here's the surprise. There is gonna be an opportunity for you guys to show off your creations. I'm gonna set up a deadline for you guys to work towards, to finish up your shmup and publish it so other people can play it, so I can play it, so other people going through this tutorial can also play it. At the day that this video is released, I will start a one month long game jam. The link to the game jam is gonna down a doobly-doo or I will put up a, you know, a pinned comment with a link so you can go. It's gonna be on itch.io. There's gonna be a game jam where you have one month from now, from here, to finish up your shmup, to do the polishing, everything, do the playtesting as I did. Then you submit it to the game jam. And after the game jam is over, after the one month is over, I will collect all of the results and I will do a playtesting session. I will go through all of the shmups that have been submitted. I will play through them uh, I, as far as I can. And I will do a commentary. I will see what I love and what I hate. And it's gonna be great. So as I said, one month from the release of this video, deadline for you to uh, finish up your shmup. Now, if you watch this video, you know, sometime in the far future when the Game Jam is over, that's fine. You can still go to the Game Jam website and see, you know, all the, all the cool games that people have made. And of course, you can post your own results always down in the Discord. There's always going to be people eager to check out what you've created. Now, I will leave you with some final resources that will help you uh, actually publish your game, do the, like, the finishing touches. I have a series of videos that will explain you exactly how to export your Pico 8 file and how to upload it to three major websites that I think are worth know, to know about. One of them is uh, LexLoffer forums, which are the official Pico 8 forums. Uh, but also I have a video about how to publish things on itch, which will be necessary if you want to participate in the game jam. But also I think it's generally a good idea to also publish your game on itch. And I also have a video on how to publish your game on Newgrounds, which is a bit of a more controversial website, but it's a good place to get some authentic, unfiltered feedback. I will also give you this one last hint, which is you absolutely want to play test your game not just you yourself playing like i just did but you definitely want to take your game give it to people to for people to play and ideally ideally you want to actually be there and experience your game being played there's this little thing that i notice whenever you know i talk to students or fellow indie dev developers who exhibited their games on like a, a show they would often approach this as the oh i know i have to set up my booth on this you know exhibition hall i don't want to do it i just want to keep working on my game like ah oh, this is just like this this gig that we have to do you know it's like ah oh, you have to stand there and show people your game i just want to you know finish this game you know but then after the show they would always approach me and be like oh my gosh i had no idea i've learned so much just by watching people play my game I have I've learned so much more from that than from anything that I did before on my game right in a way the game becomes real once you actually witness somebody you know actually playing this if you can pull it off even if it's just I don't know your family members playing or your you know or your best friends or something show them the game don't explain them anything sit them in front of the game and ask them to play it for you know five minutes or something to see what happens, take down notes and make sure that afterwards you still have enough time to make any kind of changes or tweaks uh, before uh, the release date. And with that, I wanted to give one last big thank you for all the people that supported me on Coffee that made this show possible. I will once again show off the names, all the people that are subscribers on Coffee at the time that I recorded this video. Thank you so much 
for supporting my work. So yeah, there it is. This is the end, but it's also the beginning. I will continue working on Cherry Bomb myself. I will still maybe do some little tweaks and I might do like a follow-up video showing you know, the, all the little uh, tweaks and, and the things that I did to it. I will definitely play test this game as well. I'm still not sure about it. I will bring in some feedback. I will maybe approach the Shmup community. Maybe people on Shmup servers will actually enjoy this. Let's see what they will have to say about this. And we're gonna see each other in one month when all those beautiful games will be assembled in one place. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.